The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Safina Insecticide, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Bernard Talbot back on the Soybean School for part two of our look back at 2019 with uh, Horace Bonner, O'Mafra's soybean specialist. Horace wanted to look at how we manage the crop throughout the year, what we learned here. But I, I think the first thing to talk about, the given is, you got to have good weather, good conditions, timely August rains. Yeah, absolutely. You know, again, this year, it was clear that those who managed to get timely rains, had the yields, and those that didn't, unfortunately, had poor crops. Now, you say August, absolutely correct, and I would add this year, September was essential, you know, with that late planting, but it was fascinating how the, the crops seemed to be able to push into the fall and really, you know, not catch up, but use the whole season that was available, yeah. right? So. And thank goodness we had that open October, obviously. For sure. Let's talk about some uh, some nutrients here. And you've every year you do uh, a lot of nutrient studies. Nitrogen. Um, we're always looking for a yeah, benefit yeah, in nitrogen. Right, right, right. You, you didn't, you didn't so the real sure. concept in, in uh, nitrogen management with soybeans, of course, because they fix their own nitrogen, um, we, we, we're just trying to tweak a little bit. We're trying mm. to give a little extra or, or fill a, a gap. And so one of the concepts is, of course, with very early planting or very late planting to fill that canopy faster to maybe deal with some of the corn stalks. And because we couldn't get in this year for early, we just had those later plantings, right? And so we put on 50 pounds of urea and we also put on 100 pounds of ammonium sulfate to, to, to try and cover the sulfur question. At the end of the day, Bernard, we had five trials Good trials replicated, and the untreated was 60 bushels. The 50 pounds of urea was 60.9 bushels. Hmm. NSD, no, no difference, right? And uh, the ammonium sulfate, same story. Yeah. No statistical difference, right? So uh, at the end of the day here, we really have not moved the bar when it comes to nitrogen and to be honest with you even with sulfur in a normal scenario right and i want to make that clear we're not talking about uh feeding throughout the season we're talking about throwing some on early yeah. so so uh, we'll talk about that in a minute yeah let's talk about your intensive um uh, management uh trials and that's when you add the p and the k um talk about what you saw this year when in the from that perspective. Right, so first, let's hit for a second on the long-term P and K trials because they're so fascinating. Um, this year, what we decided to do, and you'll remember we've built some blocks with uh, P and K and we've left some alone. And what we did this year, we thought, you know, maybe in the blocks that haven't been built, we're just not throwing on enough fertilizer in the year of to get to the same place as the built soil. Because, of course, we've been telling the story that the built soil did, does better, better, right? And so that's why we doubled up. And at the end of the day, this was at the Allura Research Station where we put on no fertilizer. Now, this was planted in June. Soil test is low. You're not going to like this number, but, you know, about 28 bushels where we did nothing. Mm. Where we put on fertilizer this year, 42 bushels. Right? That makes sense. Low testing soil, we fed it, fine. Pretty good scenario. Where we doubled up that fertilizer, no difference. Did not, like that 42 seemed to be kind of where we maxed out. Yeah. Here's the interesting part. Where we built the soil, put on no extra fertilizer this year, 50 bushels, right? So huge difference, huge difference in built versus not built. And where we built and threw on extra again, we really didn't change the equation. So what do you take away from that? Well, it comes back to what we've been saying, that a built soil, uh, the, the yield stability for soybeans is much higher mm -hmm. than throwing on some fertilizer the year of or the fall before. And it seems from this year's data that even if you throw on a lot of fertilizer, in that year or in the fall before, you still it's still not anywhere near the same as having built the soil. Yeah. So let's talk about um, 
I guess another part of management, and that's uh, fungicides and uh, you know right. feeding throughout the year. Um, talk about you, know, you did some fungicides yes. trials again this year. Um, what impact did that? So, be? as part of our intensive managed uh, uh, soybean trials, where we're really you know trying to push yields to the absolute maximum, um, what we did this year is we applied fungicides either once, twice, three times, and then we also fed that crop with a broadcast application of both P and K mm -hmm. and three applications of 100 pounds of urea. So feed through the year. Right, right up front, then at R1 and at R3. So at the, at the end of the day, the, the uh, yield difference for that one application of fungicide was about three bushels, okay? Which is actually pretty good yeah. considering the year and that we didn't have a lot of disease. So I, I, I was... I was pleasantly surprised. Spraying twice about four bushels, mm -hmm. right? Spraying three times didn't really change things much. So that story is about the same as we've uh, as we've talked about. Um, what's different is where we threw on that nitrogen and that P and K throughout the season now. Okay, so not just once up front, but throughout this. And let's be honest, not small amounts, right? I'm talking about 300 total of of urea and 300 total of um, mes and kmag right so we're talking significant amounts of fertilizer we managed to increase yields by 10 bushels with the fungicide right. plus the fertility throughout the season right so again i really think that when you look at our overall kind of intensive management scenario with the technology we have today you know does seem that we need to focus in on fertility and then protecting what we've built through some fungicides. Obviously, this is uh, if we have no insects. If we have insects or something, we need to deal with that. If we have nematodes, you know, mm -hmm. we have to deal with that. But in a scenario where those are not our yield limiting factors. So kind of fun though, the, the point is, you know, we did manage to get 10 bushels out of that out of our package and uh, yeah that's that that gets us a long way closer uh, a lot a lot closer to our goal of 100 100 bushels what about economic uh, return on that 10 bushels I know it's yeah a yeah yeah no it's it's it, well it certainly is a struggle yeah, yeah? Um, so that's where you get back into the specific field scenario and you know what makes sense in field A versus field B. Right. So why don't we all throw on 600 pounds of fertilizer every year for soybeans? Uh, because, uh, yeah, we, we, <laughs> we will not make money doing yeah. that, right? So uh, from my perspective, we're trying to learn what is the difference between a field that goes 45 and one that goes 100 bushels, mm -hmm. and then we will work backwards to try and figure out what makes economic sense. So that's a long-winded way of saying, mm. Bernard, yeah, we lost lots of money mm. uh, doing that, getting those 10 extra bushels. Yes. Yeah. So, and so the challenge continues. How do we feed soybeans economically yes. to, to, you know, to get yield and yes. to get a return on that yield, right? Well, so. and I think, I think we do know for sure mm. that the answer is you have to build that soil to a reasonable soil test level, right? And then, of course, that helps you with all the crops in the rotation. Yeah. But it, it seems to me that soybeans are particularly vulnerable to low soil tests and not being able to catch up by just throwing on some fertilizer the year off. So it's part of a best management strategy. Right. Right. That's the way I look at it. Um, Horst, thanks for uh, taking the time. Uh, 2019 was a... Uh an interesting year, and you'll be on the, the circuit all winter talking about it. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you about and uh, building on what we talked about today. Yeah, and certainly appreciate the opportunity. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Yep, bye-bye.